I am Dr. Jordan Amatego, family medicine physician. This is my blue chair story. I was born and raised in Nigeria, West Africa. So I grew up with my grandparents, especially my paternal grandfather. Um, so he was an herbalist, which means like he could take herbs from his farm to take care of like basic illnesses because we only had one hospital in the whole village. So he kind of uh, inspired me to actually go down to becoming a physician. In his case, he couldn't go to a formal, get a formal education that he would like me to go to school to kind of, you know, like go the proper route to become a, actually a doctor. And that's when I aspired and enrolled in school, although I didn't see much people that went to school around me. And I enrolled in school and found out that I was good at school and that kind of made me want to go further. I finished uh, my, you know, kindergarten, pre-K, um, up to high school in Nigeria. And then, you know, in the 1980s, my dad had the opportunity to come to America. So I didn't see my dad from in the 80s till, up to 1988. And when he came back to kind of bring us back with him after he got his citizenship. So um, when I was in Nigeria, I wasn't sure how my dream of being a doctor is gonna be realized. So it was a little bit kind of a fantasy, but once I got here and realized that, you know, I can actually achieve this dream, that kind of gave me the fire to continue. It was challenging at first because it was different cultures. Um, got a, a little bit of scholarship to go to Stony Brook University, um, you know, but then I was good at school. There was no problem with that. But then that's when um, my identity was called into question. You know, when I was living in Nigeria, nobody have ever questioned me, you know, my sexual identity or anything of that sort. So in college, when people were asking that question, actually funny enough, when they asked me if you were gay, I thought it meant happy because English, uh, gay means happy. So I was like, yes, I'm, I'm gay because I, I'm, it means I'm happy. That kind of took a toll on me because I, was, I didn't I first understand what they were asking about. It was more of an internal struggle, kind of growing up knowing like, oh no, it should not be this, it should be that. My mental health started to kind of deteriorate and I started to kind of af affect my school, my school work. Uh, my grades started to kind of like slip. You know, my professors were concerned about me, but I didn't know what was going on. So I pushed through college um, and then when I got to medical school is when it just went downhill. I really suffered um, uh, with my mental health and I didn't know how to approach it because because of my mental health, I couldn't do well in, in my classes during medical school. So I was kind of asked to leave. Um, and then that kind of even made things worse. Um, and I, and I kind of decided to kind of do self-reflection and find out that, you know, this is who I am, you know, being um, gay or queer. And I came out to my parents and to my family. Of course, it didn't go over well. So as a result, I became homeless. I was homeless for almost a year, and I told myself that I need to go back to school. This is the only way I can survive. This is the only way I can stay off the street. And luckily enough, that's when I met my husband, and he became the cheerleader I never had. He became the support I never had. And he was the one to, that pushed me to take care of my mental health. He said, I think you need to see somebody. You know, you need to talk to someone, get some help. And I, at first I was like, no, I'm fine. You know, I, I'll figure it out. But I listened to him and I went and I got help. And you know, the rest is history. I was able to enroll into residency, um, actually got the best third year resident in, up on, um, during graduation. So I did really well in residency because I took care of my mental health and you know, to this day, you know, I bring that experience to my practice. Um, that's why mental health is very important to me. The outcome kind of helped me become who I am today. And when I see my patients with mental health, I just relate to them because I've been in their shoes. I understand what they're going through. Sometimes share my story with them and they so much appreciate that, that I'm vulnerable with them. And it makes me much happier that I went through that. Although I wasn't happy at the time, the outcome kind of helped me become who I am today. Getting here 
initially I was in a, a different um, healthcare system, you know, and being there, I wanted to be an advocate for the LGBTQIA and also for minority. Um, and I felt that it wasn't welcome from what I was feeling, you know, I didn't feel like I was being listened to. Um, and then my first Pride in Fargo, which I was actually surprised that they have Pride, and I think that's one of the reasons we like, okay, we will do well here. I saw Sanford. Um, booth and I, it wasn't only one booth, it was two booths. So I went over to talk to them and I was just like almost in tears. I was like, okay, am I in the wrong healthcare system? You know, like I looked around, I didn't see the healthcare system I was working uh, with at the time. I made the switch and initially I was very anxious, but I'm happy that I did because I felt like I'm being listened to. Sanford is very like, you know, they have always been standing with the LGBTQIA people, they always learning to improve. Um, um, their programs and their approach and kind of openness. So I find that inspiring. You know, you don't need to know everything about the LGBTQIA individuals, but um, the, that you, the fact that you're making effort just means a lot to me. Sanford really embraces who I am. They want to know more. They want to, you know, they ask questions and I'm happy to help, help out, you know, to kind of teach people about, you know, my community. Say I've overcome the odds. I am super proud of who I am today and my community.